History doesn't always come with a handbook. Understanding the wonderful things discovered by archaeologists is the work of historians. And if historians can't do it, it becomes the work of scientists. Scientists can't always be sure of their understanding of ancient mysteries, though, and so we're left with pieces of the past that don't make any sense. That's what we're focusing on in this video. Hold on to your hats, for we're about to dive into a discovery that's truly out of this world. An arrowhead was found in the 19th century at the Bronze Age pile dwelling of Morrigan on Lake Beale in western Switzerland has been identified as being made of rare meteoric iron. Dating back to the late Bronze Age of 900 to 800 BCE, this arrowhead is believed to have been one of several unearthed at the site, with the rest being bronze. Weighing just 2.9 grams and measuring an inch and a half long, this celestial artifact is now housed in the Bern History Museum. The discovery of aluminum-26 isotopes in an iron and nickel alloy only ever detected in meteorites confirmed its otherworldly origin. Interestingly, the composition of the metal did not match the nearby Twanberg iron meteorite, leading researchers to suggest that the most likely source was a meteorite found in Estonia. This finding is a testament to the extensive trade network active during the Bronze Age in Central Europe. How did the ancient craftsmen work with this unique material? And what stories might this arrowhead tell of battles fought and legends forged? It's a discovery that truly shoots for the stars. Dive with us into the depths of the Mediterranean Sea, where a lifeguard has discovered a rare 2,500-year-old marble disc near Palmachim Beach at the Yavne Yam archaeological site in Israel. This large white marble disc, measuring about 8 inches in diameter, was designed to protect ancient chips and ward off the evil eye. Identified as an eye motif or ophthalmoi in Greek, such discs adorn the bows of ancient warships and merchant vessels, acting as a pair of eyes looking ahead and warning of danger. Though once common, only four similar ancient items have been discovered in the Mediterranean. The Yavne Yam site has revealed many Bronze Age finds, including gold items, bronze arrowheads, and figurines of the god Baal indicating continuous use from the late Bronze Age to the medieval period. Imagine the ancient mariners who once sailed these waters, guided by the watchful eyes of these marble discs. How did they craft and attach these unique artifacts to their ships? What other secrets lie beneath the waves waiting to be uncovered? This discovery is a fascinating glimpse into the maritime practices and beliefs of an ancient civilization connecting us to a time when the sea was a realm of mystery and magic. Now let's talk about a hidden treasure atop a ridge in Albania, where an unknown city has been rediscovered, revealing secrets that have been concealed for millennia. This mysterious ancient city, a part of ancient Illyria, was unearthed in Bushat in 2018 by archaeologists from the University of Warsaw. The city's ruins, considered an important urban center, are spread across two ridges, forming a roughly triangular shape. Among the remarkable findings is a 2,400-year-old building, identified as a Praetanian or Hestia Terran, where government officials met or an internal fire was kept. Inside, archaeologists discovered what was described as an astonishing number of wine-drinking vessels of various sizes suggesting the city was planned and run like an ancient Greek city. The Illyrians, who controlled much of the modern-day Balkans, were conquered by the ancient Romans in 168 BCE. The site also revealed ruins of defensive walls, two city gates, and evidence of the city's size and significance. Located about 50 miles northwest of Tirana, near the border with Montenegro, this discovery offers a fascinating glimpse into a long-lost civilization. Take a second to think about the gatherings that took place in that building, the clinking of wine glasses, the discussions, and the rituals. Istanbul, a city rich in history and culture, has unveiled yet another hidden gem, a mysterious chapel discovered in the Bagsalar district. This historical structure, whose origins and builders remain unknown, stands unprotected and in derelict condition, prompting archaeologists to call for excavations in the region. 
The building, which resembles a passage from afar, is postulated to be a chapel surrounded by workplaces, and even a school on top of it. Archaeologist Omer Farouk Yavaske, who noticed the structure while researching city maps, found that on some old maps, the structure is shown as Ayazma, meaning holy water. Noting a Greek village in the region during the Ottoman period, Yavaske believes the structure was likely built by the Greek village's people in the late 1800s. Interestingly, locals recall the place being used as a fountain 25 to 30 years ago. The Bagkalar district, known for its vineyards, was once populated by non-Muslim people during the Ottoman period. This discovery calls for detailed excavation and protection, offering a glimpse into the multicultural tapestry of Istanbul's past. How might this discovery reshape our understanding of Istanbul's diverse heritage? It's a tantalizing mystery waiting to be unraveled. If you translate the name Simalutash from the ancient Kyrgyz language into English, you get embroidered stones. That's a somewhat poetic description of these carved and painted stones in Tagus Toro, Kyrgyzstan, high in the mountain valleys of the region. Archaeologists believe the artwork on the stones to have been created about 4,000 years ago. The amount of artwork at the site is almost unbelievable. More than 90,000 separate petroglyphs have been identified so far, but there are doubtless more to be discovered. The site's divided into two halves with a pond between the two. The scenes depicted in these rocky galleries are varied, showing shamanic rituals, groups of people hunting animals, and even sexual intercourse. There are also signs that there was once a settlement at the site, but by the time the settlement was founded 2,800 years ago, the oldest of the petroglyphs were already ancient. Saka priests once came here to perform sacrificial rites and may have been attracted to the area because of the glyphs that had spiritual significance to them. The identity of the culture that created the glyphs will probably never be known. The Sacro Catino, also known as the Grail of Genoa, is an artifact so old that its history has been lost to time. Legends tell us that it was first brought to Genoa in Italy in 1101 by Guglielmo Imbriaccio, having been captured during the conquest of Caesarea during the First Crusade. That's not the only thing that legends and folklore have to say about it. When it arrived in Italy, it was said to be the plate used by Jesus Christ during the Last Supper. The people of the time thought it was made from emerald, but a later study performed during the time of Napoleon proved that wasn't the case. Despite looking like it was made from the precious stone, it's actually blown glass, which means it can't possibly date back to the time of Jesus. Knowing what it isn't, though, doesn't get us any closer to knowing what it is. The mystery behind the artifact makes it one of the most visited pieces at the Museo dei Tesoro inside the Cathedral of San Lorenzo, where it's still treated as a holy object even if Jesus never ate his lamb off it. Did the Pueblo people of Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, USA have extra fingers and toes compared to the rest of the human race? If not, they must have deliberately painted extra digits onto the hand and footprints they decorated the walls of their homes with. A survey carried out by researchers on the remains of Pueblo people has indicated that a higher than average number of them had polydactyly, the presence of additional digits. But the genetic abnormality still accounted for far fewer than one-tenth of them. If five-digit handprints and footprints also appeared on the walls of Pueblo homes, there wouldn't be an issue because only the six-digit prints exist. Archaeologists theorize that people with additional fingers and toes were viewed as having been gifted something special by the gods. A five-fingered person might invite a six-fingered person to come and place their handprints on their home because they'd view it as a form of blessing, for example. The Pueblo people lived in the high desert area of the canyon a little over 1,000 years ago, and there's still a great deal we don't know about them. The Middleham Jewel was found by amateur metal detectorist Ted Seaton as he walked along a horse trail close to Middleham Castle, Yorkshire, England in 1985. It was a discovery that changed his life. The jewel is actually a gold pendant from the 15th century and may once also have been a reliquary. 
Although its internal cavity was empty, save for a few scraps of fabric when it was found, the pendant is set with a blue sapphire and engraved on each side with religious scenes, including the crucifixion. Such is the elaborate nature of the piece that some historians feel it may have belonged to Anne Neville, the wife of Richard III. The blue of the sapphire, along with the presence of several female saints among the inscriptions, may suggest that the jewel was a gift given to assist with the process of childbirth. When Ted was granted permission to sell the jewel in 1986, he received £1.4 million for it. But that wasn't the end of the story. The British government refused permission for the jewel to be exported to its foreign buyer and raised further funds for the Yorkshire Museum to buy it instead, eventually acquiring it for £2.5 million. It's time to visit a valley south of the Royal Cemetery of Umm al -Kab, carved into the sacred mountain of Abydos, where a team of Egyptian archaeologists has stumbled upon mysterious carved rock chambers high in the wall. These chambers, some leading to single rooms and others to multiple rooms, were once of pronounced religious importance. Dating back to the Ptolemaic period of 304 to 30 BCE, the chambers are connected by small doors cut into the rock wall, with some featuring deep niches, sides of benches, and shallow depressions. Some chambers are enlargements of natural tunnels created by water flowing over thousands of years. Interestingly, ropes or grab handles were found next to most of the rock openings, and the chambers do not appear to have been used as tombs. The only carved decoration consists of two small figures cut in bas-relief on the side of one entry point. The complex's function remains a mystery, with only a single example of graffiti giving names and a single carving depicting figures. The excavations in the area will continue, promising more insights into this enigmatic site. For all our 21st century advances in medical technology, we still haven't come up with a functioning prosthetic eye device. All we can do if someone loses an eye is give them a ball to fill the socket with, which is exactly the same thing we did almost 5,000 years ago. Here's the proof. It's a prosthetic eye in the skull of a human skeleton that was found in the famous ancient burnt city of Shar i Sokhta in Iran. The fake eyeball in its socket is made from a fairly disgusting-sounding mixture of animal fat and tar, which was then painted gold. It's comfortably the oldest prosthetic eye ever discovered. It's unlikely that any member of this ancient civilization could have got a prosthetic eye if they wanted one, in this case, the recipient was a six-foot-tall woman who's thought to have been a high priestess. She was probably between 25 and 30 years old when she passed away. The ancient surgeon who installed the prosthetic had a surprisingly good grasp of the eye's anatomy, right down to using golden wires to simulate blood vessels. The ancient Egyptians also created prosthetic eyes, but this one is older than the oldest known Egyptian equivalent by at least a thousand years. The ruins of the Racton Monument in West Sussex, England are anything but a new discovery. But there's been a recent focus on the location after numerous reports of ghostly goings-on in the vicinity. Although it's a well-known landmark in Chichester, the history of the monument is mysterious. Most sources say that it was built in the 18th century after being commissioned by Lord Halifax for unknown reasons. The building came to be viewed as a folly, although the lower half was briefly used for hosting banquets. Local legends say that it had become a brothel by the 19th century, although there's no reliable evidence to support this idea. By that point, the building had already survived in order for it to be demolished in 1782. The ghosts people claim to have seen in and around the monument range from the chilling to the absurd with a disembodied face said to appear in the window hole of one of the upper floors and several sightings of a spectral tractor in the fields around it. The most recent stories, which were investigated by a local newspaper, claim that bricks fly through the air at the site of their own volition. Plenty of ancient inventions are still in use today. Here's Arcadico Bridge in Arcadico, Greece, as proof of that statement. It was designed as a chariot bridge, but was designed so robustly that it can cope with the weight of modern cars. 
The bridge is short and straddles a small gully and is somewhere between 3,200 and 3,300 years old. It's the oldest arch bridge in Europe that's still in use and might even be the oldest in the world. The road it was built on was the main route between Epidaurus and Tiryns and is thought to have been part of a large-scale military road system used by the mighty Greek army. The style of architecture on display here is known as Cyclopean masonry, which uses limestone boulders with smaller stones and tiles between the boulders to hold them in place. The bridge has kept its shape for all these years despite the fact that it doesn't feature any mortar. Look closely when you cross the bridge and you can still see the original curbs that were intended as guides for horse-drawn vehicles when making crossings. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.